Hi, welcome to day 45. Today's episode is brought to you by the letters EMF. EMF stands for electromotive force, which is another way of referring to the potential difference or charge imbalance that pushes and pulls the electrons around a circuit. And what we're going to talk about today is some things about batteries. What I have here is your standard 9 volt transistor battery and we're going to hook it up to a voltmeter and see what we get. You'd expect somewhere around 9 volts. Now when you hook a battery up to a voltmeter what you are measuring is the battery's open circuit voltage. It's not supplying a current to a load. It's strictly hooked up to a voltmeter so it is supplying no current and it's called the open circuit voltage and you can see this 9 volt transistor battery as you might imagine it gives us well pretty darn close to 9 volts okay that's not too surprising now let's see what happens when we take this same battery and we hook it up to a load so what I have over here you can see is a pretty simple circuit with a resistance in it, uh, an ammeter in it to measure current, and the star of our show, the 9 volt transistor battery. So here we go. We hook up the 9 volt transistor battery. To the load and you can see it's giving us a pretty good current. It's giving us one and a half amps of current. Uh, what kind of voltage is it giving us? Let's take a look at that. We'll use the voltmeter. Not much voltage, pretty disappointing actually, only three volts. Okay, now really quickly, let's unhook the battery. Let's try the open circuit voltage again. You know, maybe the battery's died. Maybe it's uh, super weak after that brief little stint hooked up to the resistor. So here we go. Hook it up to the voltmeter again. Again, this is the open circuit voltage. It's not supplying a current to anything. And yeah, shoots right up there to, again, pushing 9 volts. So the moral of the story is that if a battery isn't hooked up to a load, if you're measuring its open circuit voltage, it's going to give you uh, whatever it's labeled has. A 9 volt battery, 9 volts. A 1.5 volt battery, 1.5 volts. But as soon as you hook that battery up to a circuit, and it's going to supply uh, a current to that circuit, uh, then its voltage is going to drop. And the reason for that is something we'll talk about a couple days from now. But uh, at this point in time, just realize that if you have a battery and it's not supplying a current, it's going to give you the stated voltage. Okay. If it's supplying a current, that voltage is going to drop uh, big time. Uh, I shouldn't say uh, big time in all cases. In uh, the case of a really good battery, it will just drop slightly, but it will drop. Uh, next thing we'll look at is what happens when you put batteries in series and parallel. All right, let's see now what happens if we put a couple batteries in series. What I have here are a couple of standard D cell flashlight batteries 1.5 volts negative end positive end and the other exactly the same 1.5 volts negative end positive end and let's take a look at these batteries one at a time now remember we're taking the open circuit voltage here they're not hooked up to a load they're not supplying a current to anything And yeah, just as you expect, just like it says on the label, right around 1.5 volts, maybe a touch more. And if we do the other one, it 
same deal 1.5 volts just like it says on the label maybe a little bit more uh, of course if we hook them up to loads uh, and they were actually supplying a current uh, the voltage would probably be a little bit less but we're not worried about that right now let's put these things in series now just like it says we're going to connect them positive to negative and then from there we're going to go out to the rest of the circuit in other words the voltmeter so here we go we got these handy dandy clips we can actually snap them together and you can see they are indeed positive to negative let's hook them up to the voltmeter again and yeah as you might expect uh their voltages add to give us a little more than three okay now uh here's an interesting scenario what happens if we put the batteries like that any guesses okay well let's give it a try and yeah it's basically like nothing is happening and when you think about it that makes sense because you got one battery with three volts of potential difference trying to push the current one way the other battery with three volts of potential difference pardon me 1.5 volts of potential difference trying to push the current one way the other battery with 1.5 volts of potential difference trying to push the battery the other way and of course the two can cancel each other out and you get a total reading of zero uh next thing we'll do is we'll take a look at what happens if you put batteries in parallel let's see what happens now if you put batteries in parallel and as you can see from the diagram when batteries are in parallel the connections are positive to positive and then out to the rest of the circuit and negative to negative and then out to the rest of the circuit and these two batteries right here okay they are indeed hooked up in parallel it is positive to positive out to the rest of the circuit and negative to negative and hooked up to the rest of the circuit uh, let's bring a voltmeter into the mix and see what kind of voltage they're giving us and again this is the open circuit voltage because they're not supplying any current to a load it's just a voltmeter so there's our trusty voltmeter and what kind of a reading are we going to get here looks like 1.5 volts and that's what it's supposed to be if you have two 1.5 volt batteries in parallel okay all you're going to get on your voltmeter is 1.5 volts so the question is why bother putting batteries in parallel it's pretty obvious why you put them in series because you get more voltage why bother putting them in parallel okay. well here's the reason let's suppose you have a flashlight that needs 1.5 volts across its terminals so you hook up to 1.5 volt batteries in parallel there's going to be 1.5 volts of potential difference across the flashlight terminals perfect let's say the flashlight it draws two amps when it's got 1.5 volts across its terminals okay so the flashlight needs two amps and if you have two batteries in parallel well you can see each battery is only going to have to supply one amp so the batteries are going to last longer that's why you put batteries in parallel then they have to supply less current and then they're going to last longer uh, another question people have is uh, what if one battery has more voltage like look at this situation you can see 6 volt battery in parallel with a 1.5 volt battery in parallel with the resistance well in a situation like this the current comes from the 6 volt battery and that's the the main current or the total current in the circuit and then that current splits and the 6 volt battery basically drives current backwards through the 1.5 volt battery the 1.5 volt battery it basically comes 
uh, a, a resistance. And of course, the rest of the current goes through the, the uh, resistance and there's gonna be six volts, a six volt potential decrease across the resistance, right? If you're going around this circuit here, you got an increase of six and you got a decrease of six, okay? Uh, this is a situation that never really happens. People really don't uh, set a circuit up like this, but it's kind of good to know what's going on just out of curiosity. If one battery is stronger than the other, well, the stronger battery just shoots backwards current through the weaker battery, and that weaker battery actually acts as a resistance. Uh, as far as an assignment is concerned, uh, basically watch the, the video, understand what's going on, and you are good to go. We will look at uh, batteries in more detail uh, tomorrow. It'll be a little more mathematical and there will be an assignment to accompany things. Bye for now.